So I apologize for not getting to anything in a while. Uh, the truth is, it's not that I was burned out, it's just I just wasn't really sure when to get to it or like how to plan out this stuff and I had a few other things uh, sort of happening in the meantime. Um, now I think it's a decent time. The only thing is, currently I'm kind of guinea pig sitting for a friend right now and if you're wondering why I didn't get to this at any other time before I got to this moment, well, I didn't really foresee this, but also fuck you, if I have to suffer then you have to suffer with me. You know, they probably won't make any noise anyway because they're kind of scared of new environments, so chances are you won't really hear much. If anything, there'll just be some rustling in the background. I think I want to try something new for this series. Instead of necessarily going through the entire game in one sitting or one or two recordings, I thought instead, why don't I try to break up my recording sessions for each individual level, and that way I'll have a bit more to talk about and I don't really have to go through one run knowing what I'm supposed to be talking about at each level, and over time, you know, you're not really sure of ideas. That's how I'm going to be structuring this uh, playthrough, and I'll see if it turns out okay, and if not for like the next game I'm just going to be going through it again or trying something different, I'm not really sure. So as I said before, we're getting into Mega Man X, not just the first game, but I want to get into the series, at least the first four games, because actually I have the first X Legacy Collection on Switch, I also have the second collection but I didn't actually play through any of those games yet. And I'm thinking if I were to, it would be through some kind of blind uh, stream where I'd go through these games. I know that, especially X6 and 7, they don't really have the best reputation for the series. But I still want to give it a try anyway and see what happens, you know? Though actually, I want to clarify that, and this is coming from personal experience, if you were to just jump into X1, even knowing that this doesn't have any previous X games and you're going into the first of a series, it really doesn't do a whole lot to tell you what's going on as part of the bigger picture. It's not a huge amount of lore for the series, but I find that it's kind of important to go over anyway. Luckily, when Mega Man X was re-released on the PSP as Maverick Hunter X, they included a cutscene called The Day of Sigma. It's about 20-ish minutes, and I want to cover some of that. It sort of sets off the events of the series and gives you a lot more insight as to what's going on, and instead of dropping you just into the game like Mega Man X actually does. So I want to go into that, maybe discuss some of the cutscenes slightly. Nothing too crazy, but I want to see how that works out. Can I just say, I really love how the Legacy Collection includes Day of Sigma. It's just such a great cutscene thing. It really is like an episode of a TV show. It's that good. And the voice acting in here is a lot better than the voice acting in some of the later games. Notably X4, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that one. So although the special starts in the midst of action, I'm actually going to cut ahead to a flashback later in the special near the end that X has of Dr. Light, since it connects the classic series and the X series a lot better to each other. So we see Dr. Light creating Mega Man X as a new kind of robot called a Reploid, able to feel emotion and make its own decisions. Weird, I, I kind of thought Mega Man could do that, especially considering Mega Man Base and Mega Man 9. It just seemed like something he could do, but apparently it's established that he can't. Uh, whatever. X? You called me X? Is that my name? That's right. It's a variable. It represents limitless potential. You see... Yeah, okay, Doc, what you're saying is really cool and all that, but he just kind of died right there. Just give him some time. He then wakes up some indeterminate amount of time later. Light tells him that humans aren't ready for this kind of power with robots, and then he just kind of dies again. Come on, man, just get together. Finally, X wakes up completed. Dr. Light tells him that he still isn't ready for humans in this world, but that in the future, due to his ability to think and feel, he'll be a valuable asset as a great hero. Doctor, I'll use this power to fight for justice, to fight for hope. Oh, thank God, or else the world would be kind of screwed at this point. Dr. Light sets the capsule to open in the future, and X goes into a long hibernation. 
Now about at this point comes into play one of the biggest mysteries of the series. The X-Series takes place about a hundred years after the classic series, so we could assume that Dr. Light and Dr. Wily died at this point of old age. But what happened to Mega Man, Roll, all the Robot Masters, Base, etc.? There's really no mention of them at all. It's just assumed that they got destroyed in some way, shape, or form, but we don't really know what. Either way, though, they don't exist in this series. Anyway, skipping ahead many years later, a man named Dr. Kane found Dr. Light's lab, as well as a dormant X, and Light's research on this ability to create a reploid that could think and feel for itself. Dr. Kane then took on the responsibility of continuing Dr. Light's research to create a whole line of new reploids in order to help humanity. The only thing Kane couldn't quite get right was a chip in Mega Man X that caused him to hurt whenever he had to resort to violence. Gee, not being able to replicate a chip that causes robots to feel empathy? I guess that's not too much of a problem, now is it, Kane? Now unfortunately, or fortunately, considering the game would be pretty boring without this, some robots have contracted a virus that turns them maverick, which means that they go against their programming and rebel against humans. In the midst of this, there was a task force created called the Maverick Hunters, where X, his buddy Zero, and her commander Sigma are all a part of, as well as a bunch of other units. And finally... This is where the special takes off. A giant robot turned Maverick is attacking the city, and the Maverick Hunters are there helping out. X gets there just in time, but as he's about to make a shot, it grabs one of the Maverick Hunters and holds it in front of its weak point. X hesitates to take the shot in fear of hitting the Maverick Hunter, so that's when Commander Sigma comes in, delivering a fatal blow to the robot, but also causing one of the Maverick Hunters to lose an arm. And then the screen of my Switch dimmed because I forgot that you have to keep moving the controllers in order to keep the screen bright, and then I corrected it within the next couple seconds, and I basically just had to keep shaking the controller for the remainder of the special, and it feels so dumb. X. Yes, Commander Sigma, sir. Your aiming capabilities are no different than my own. You could have easily hit the generator. <sighs> you are aware that there was only a small chance that our compatriot would have been hit by the blast, correct? Sigma then tells X something very important. Since the Maverick Hunters have sworn to protect the city, X should have taken the shot when he could have, even though it would have resulted in an injured Maverick Hunter, because it's more important that they save the city than their own people. Sigma acknowledges that this is because X has a compassionate drive in him, however he doesn't think that this is very useful out on the battlefield. By the way, since I'm sure you're dying to know, that Maverick Hunter's fine, he's just going in for repairs. Thank god they covered that or else we'd be at a loss. So X and Zero make it back to the Maverick Hunter base. They hear some of the Maverick Hunters talking about how this is not the first attack in the last little while and that's probably leading up to something. Then they bring up Vile, the Maverick Hunter who is being arrested for causing more shit than he probably went out there to stop. It definitely sounds like it's leading up to something, but in terms of the special there's no real payoff? But more on that later. Sigma sees Dr. Kane to talk about X's most recent fuck up on the battlefield. We see Dr. Kane attached to a massive life support machine, as he says that he's extending his life as much as possible so he can see his creations become reality. Kane assures Sigma that although this is X's biggest weakness, it's also his greatest strength as it brings him closer to humanity. He tends to hesitate when the situation calls for decisive action. He worries too much. Of course, that is his greatest feature, and the source of his potential. I guess Sigma just kind of has trouble believing this. Also, fuck you, Matthew. You had to come in and destroy the entire recording. Yeah, that'll teach you to play Mario Maker 2 while I'm watching Day of Sigma. Bitch. Anyway, then we cut to Zero's training, where he tries to put himself in the same situation that X was at the beginning of the special, though he wasn't able to quite make the shot. Storm Eagle then shows up to tell Zero that he's no longer patrolling the missile base because they have a new automated defense system. And that probably won't have any repercussions in the future. He then tells Zero that the Maverick Hunters have been called to a meeting regarding the rogue mechanoloid at the beginning of the special. And you have no idea how many takes that last sentence took to record for some reason. So apparently there was no one actually inside that mechanoloid and it was being controlled remotely by somewhere really close, allegedly. Zero then addresses that the mechanoloid had a defense system. Hmm? What about the mechanoloid security program? A system that complicated really shouldn't be so easy to hack! X and Zero go to check up on the situation, but the second they get there, everybody's dead. Good job, guys. The perpetrator didn't seem to leave behind any kind of evidence whatsoever, 
but when Sigma interrogates them, it seems like Zero realizes that the perpetrator must have had excellent combat skills as every single attack was directed at a weak spot. Also, I like how Sigma just nods at Zero and then just kind of looks at X menacingly for a sec. It just seems so weird. The next day, we see that another mechanoloid has gone berserk in a very nearby area. Meanwhile, it cuts to Vile Cell as he's being released by... Yeah, the special kind of gives away who it is, but if you couldn't figure it out by now, what is wrong with you? Meanwhile, we see X and Zero racing through the highway on hover bikes, which is a clever call forward to Mega Man X2. They're told to report to Vile's cell where they hear an incoming message that he's been released from his cell. But when they get there, everyone again has been destroyed in the same means as previously. They then get a call as X kind of awkwardly smacks his X-Buster against his head, saying that the perpetrator has been tracked down to the missile base. Also, they haven't gotten any word from Commander Sigma, which definitely can't be good. X and Zero enter the missile base where they find Commander Sigma. What a surprise. He said he had to deactivate his communicator so he wouldn't blow his cover. Yeah, whatever you say. And mother of all twists, Sigma delivers an attack right to Zero while his back is turned. But Zero is able to quickly grab his hand before he can because he had realized that Sigma was behind the attacks. But then Sigma just kind of grabs his face and dangles him above his own. Again, mirroring the same situation X was in at the beginning of the special, kind of taunting him at this point. If you really want to stop me, you'll have to shoot, destroying Zero in the process. I... What's the matter? I... Shoot! I mean, that would kind of defeat the purpose of trying to save Zero, considering X would hurt him anyway. Ugh. So Sigma slashes Zero with his saber, leaving behind no noticeable wounds. Alright then. And then he grabs X by the neck while he just kind of laughs at him again. And X doesn't shoot, even though he has no reason not to shoot. What are you doing? Shoot him! Perhaps it's time you laid down your arms. <laughs> Ha! So in order to test the potential of Reploid, Sigma decides to release all the missiles and set them on a course to Able City, the same city that all this took place in. He believes that in order for Reploids to evolve, there must be sacrifices. Though obviously this is a bit extreme. Also, the special makes it seem like Dr. Kane was caught in one of the explosions of a missile. Well, that's evidently not true because he appears in X2 and X3, but none of the games afterwards. We then cut back to X with Sigma's saber in his chest. Wow, aren't you glad we cut away? X starts losing consciousness, and then he has that flashback I brought up with Dr. Light earlier. With this in mind, he gains the courage to fight back and chip away at the pain around Sigma's eyes, I guess. It does make him look badass, though. Then X, still having a hole in his chest, just kind of dies. Again. Still hasn't gotten his shit together. So this is the power that you possess. The potential to advance all Reploids. <laughs> Is that the best evil laugh you got? Eh, I give it like a 7 out of 10. It's alright, passable, but eh, I'll check up on him later. Eventually Zero wakes up, realizes that X is kind of dead, helps him to recover, and Sigma stands on the roof of a building just kind of being a jackass. He does have a pretty cool cape though. Speaking of which, I'm checking up on that evil laugh, how is it? <laughs> no. Alright, give him props. That's way better. And, well, that's where the games take off. I should also point out that going Maverick doesn't necessarily mean that you've been programmed to do so, or that you've had some kind of programming error in you. You can also just choose to go with Maverick, though it's less common than the other options, as you usually tend to be persuaded by someone that's also going Maverick already. It's actually implied that Vile himself has gone Maverick through his own volition, since it was Sigma that persuaded him to do so. And with that, the lore is complete. So, on the next episode, because this has been going on for a while, I will take my first steps in the actual game, and we'll kick off this marathon of X Games. So, I'll see you then.